Hi guys, welcome to Dr. BKM Institute. Please subscribe our channel if you have not for the best OET videos. And we are just going to record a video related to writing. And we normally call it that it is the expected exam tomorrow. But it's not exactly the expected exam. It's the kind of the exam that can come tomorrow. When it comes to OET, we all are nurses or doctors. We all understand that what kind of exam can come. Obviously, there would be a letter. So what would you like to know in a letter? First of all, what would you like to know? Suppose if I tell you to write a letter, what is the first thing that you would like to know? You would like to know to whom I am writing the letter. Because you understand, you understand if I am writing to physiotherapist, I will not talk about the social history of the patient, that social history that patient lives alone. Why would you tell a physiotherapist that patient lives alone? Why would you tell a physiotherapist that patient smokes? Why would you tell a patient that patient a uh, physiotherapist that patient drinks? These are the things we normally will tell to a doctor or maybe to a physician or maybe to an orthopedician. We can tell he is a smoker if he's if he's having osteoporosis problem. So the data is selected according to this main word to whom we are writing the letter. That is the main thing. You plan each and everything of your letter. According to whom you are letter, if, if by the time you start your letter, so what you can do for this strategy is that on your question paper, you can mention on the front page, I'm writing to physiotherapist or I'm writing to dentist or I'm writing to orthopedician. Please mention this word on your question paper so that at the end of the letter or at the start of the letter, you should always remember to whom you are writing the letter. The problem when sometimes people say that exam was difficult, that means there was certain data that was confusing. Main thing that you have to understand in OET writing, if there is anything that is confusing you, leave it. Best strategy to pass. Then you will not have any problem in arranging the letter or understanding the letter. If there is anything difficult in the letter, any data that is confusing you, leave it. Simple then you will write a very simple letter. Most of the times when it comes to OET, which can be a community nurse letter. Community nurse, why community nurse letter is so common? Because what happens in foreign countries that people go to doctors, physicians, they take the treatment and we are the nurses with the doctors. So we work in the clinics sometimes. So in the clinics, being a nurse or a doctor, we have to write the letter and in the foreign countries, when patient gets the treatment, after the treatment, patient goes to community health center for the follow-up care. So this is why this is such a common letter. Because in foreign countries, this is the most common thing you do. That you refer the patient to community health center. That means there would be a community nurse who will take care of the patient. So obviously, this letter is a follow-up care. So this is the main word that will come out of this thing. Follow-up care or you can say ongoing care. Now, what is the difference between follow-up care? Ongoing care means, suppose, if you were providing the physiotherapy in your hospital or in your clinic and the patient needs to continue the physiotherapy sessions at community center, so you will call this thing as ongoing care. Ongoing care means it's a continued care. You can also write this word. The patient is being referred to you for ongoing care or for continued care. So these are the two special words. If by chance patient came to you with a fracture, you treated the patient with the fracture, put the plaster on and everything. So the patient is better now. Now in the hospital, you will discharge the patient. So now the patient needs follow-up care. So again, what is the difference between follow-up care? Follow-up care means that something was going in the hospital after that the care that is required is follow-up care. So this is the most common letter that is normally called a discharge letter. You can say if the patient is was visiting in your clinic, then you cannot discharge the patient. So in that case, you will say, sir, it is a follow-up care letter. If the patient was taking some treatment in your clinic and he has to continue the same care, you will say the patient is being referred to you for continued care or ongoing care. So these are the special words you need to understand. In the first paragraph, you don't have to explain anything. You just write these easy words that the patient is being referred to you. I will give you a sample. This letter is being written to you. 
regarding Mr. X. Who was admitted to our hospital due to fracture? Forgive me for the spelling mistakes. Please note the keywords. And in exam, you cannot do the spelling mistakes. Please note this thing as well. Due to fracture. After required treatment, including plaster, including plaster, that we have given the required treatment and mention about the main treatment if you would like including application of plaster. So this is a better word. He is better. So patient was having some fracture. So after the required treatment and including the application of plaster, he is better. Simple. And if the patient is better, you will discharge the patient. Sorry. He is better. So he is being discharged. Now these are the simple connectors you write. These are the simple connectors you write that this letter is begin, written regarding to Mr. X who was admitted to our hospital due to fracture. Suppose the patient came due to myocardial infarction. So you will write myocardial infarction. Suppose the patient was admitted due to migraine, severe migraine or maybe epilepsy. Then you write epilepsy. So nothing changes in OET. You just mentioned the main problem here. Then you provided the treatment. After that patient becomes better. So he is being discharged. That is a common thing. Now he needs follow-up care or ongoing care. Last word. And hence is being referred to you. That's it. That's the simple discharge letter first paragraph that you will write guys. Simple. Don't make it complex. Don't write. In the last, when you will write the last paragraph, then you will write everything of the follow-up care that patient needs this thing, patient needs that thing. Then it's simple. Now, the second common letter. Second common letter is a visit letter. Visit letter pattern means that patient came to you and you were working in a clinic. But he did not get better. So as you are mute guys, I know, but tell in your mind, if the patient is not getting better, what will you do? What will you do? Yes, you will send it, send the patient to an expert. Expert means specialist. So when you get a letter of this kind that you have to write a letter to the specialist. So you tell main this thing that this letter is being written regarding Mr. X or Mrs. Y, whatever the person would be, Mrs. Y. Simple, please follow this. Don't get, uh, you know, kind of carried away or bored. It's important. Please just pay attention for like 10 minutes and you will understand each and everything. So first of all, in the exam, you need to understand to whom you are writing the letter. That is what I'm saying. Expert, you are writing to a specialist. So I will tell the specialist, sir, this letter is being written regarding Mrs. Y. Who was visiting our clinic due to chest pain according to the letter chest pain or maybe due to headache severe headache whatever is given in your letter the main thing the main main sign and symptom write only that thing although now this is a special connector in this kind of letter although required treatment was given yet his condition has not improved now this is lovely this is the letter kind of a letter you will say that basically the condition has not improved now you have the reason so what you do in the first paragraph if you will understand you always write the main thing main thing is that he is better now that is why he needs follow-up care in this letter his condition has not improved that is the main thing Therefore, he is being referred under your expertise. That's it. Simple. That is always try to make this kind of strategy in the exam. Find the main problem. Find the main problem. Condition has not improved. Therefore, he is re referred under your expertise for its management. It's whatever the problem is.
so you can write the main problem or if you want to write now he is having this problem as i believe you can also write this way you, he is having main problem jo bhi main problem hai whatever the main problem is you can write here and you can say therefore he is being referred to you so means it does not matter whether whether you write this line or you do not so don't worry about small things oh my god i have not written this way i have not tell the main problem when you read the letter you will have 10 first 5 minutes they will not allow you to pick up the pencil so you just need to know what is the main purpose of the letter so when you get the main purpose that the condition has not improved so you say therefore he is being referred under your expertise for its management if by chance the patient is a suspected case then you can simply say yet his condition has not improved now he is suspected with this problem therefore he is being referred under your expertise for definitive diagnosis means the patient is suspected so he needs definitive diagnosis and further management now this is a nice word that when the patient is a suspected case you say he came to us with chest pain condition has not improved now he is suspected with this therefore he is being referred under your expertise if you write this first paragraph nicely with this kind of commas and no complexity simple paragraph then it is highly likely you will easily score your desired grade that is b grade in oit writing if first paragraph is right there are high chances if you have made this paragraph simple you have found the main problem you have sent it to the right person that is the only thing they want to know then you can write anything and if any data is confusing leave that data if it is a big letter and you want want to write only if there is a big visit on 5 january 5 january they have given like 20 points even if you will write two points only which are the main points it's fine you can leave 18 points don't worry about it just cover your 200 words suppose if you wrote only two points and you reach to 180 words by chance if you reach to 180 words then what you do last line you will say please note the patient is also having this problem whatever the confusing data was you can write it in the last by mentioning this thing please note the patient is also having this problem so please take care that's it if you don't want to write please take care you just want to say it is important to note that patient is also having this problem that's it even then this line is complete so what you are telling that if by chance you are 180 words and you write this thing no problem then second confusion is by chance you write 210 words then people due to the anxiety what they do they erase words erasing is not a good thing unless you are having more than 220 words don't erase it it's fine if you are having 218 words don't panic that's fine of course it should be around 200 but there is nothing to panic because erasing is not a good option with pencil or eraser it doesn't look nice at the end of the day when you erase it so now to highlight the key points the main thing that you will do tomorrow for the oit writing is to find to whom you are writing the letter if you are writing to the physiotherapist you will select the data then smoking drinking all these things are not required so please select the data accordingly and again if data is confusing leave it and in the end if you have some words then you write it in the end please note like this in all the letters this is the strategy any social history any medical history that is confusing in the last you can say please note the patient is also having this problem don't write anything that is confusing you in the middle that is the best strategy strategy to score higher then coming on to the last and the most important letter this is the main thing if community nurse do not come most of the times referred back letter or discharge back letters will come now what is the strategy for this letter which has the maximum chances even tomorrow as well these are the commonly repeated letters apart from community nurse now this is a referred back letter community nurse means i also want to say district nurse follow up care nurse all mean the same thing district nurse community nurse they all are follow up letters so don't mean that community nurse means community nurse but now the last letter referred back letter referred back letter is a very nice letter please try to understand this simple letter and these are the most commonly repeated letter referred letter means 
patient went to a GP. He took the treatment. He did not get better. He did not get better. So what GP did, GP sent the patient to a specialist. And you are the nurse at specialist clinic or hospital. You are the nurse or, or you yourself are a doctor in case of doctors. So you are standing at the specialist clinic. Now you treat the patient, patient is better. You say now you are better. So we are referring you back to your GP. So the patient came from GP going back to GP. So these are the referred back letters. So how would you write it? Obviously this letter is being written regarding your referred patient, Mr. X. Now this is nice. Who was referred to us due to this problem. Rest of the things remain same. Now he is better. So he is being referred back to you and you are requested to provide him follow up thing. All good. You are today you are getting 350 marks if you write this simple. There you go. And see, simple letter is being written regarding your referred patient. Sorry, it should be a comma. Please note the commas nicely. Mr. X, who was referred to us due to this thing. Now he's better. So he's being referred back to you. Now, the only problem that you are understanding is that referred word is repeating again and again. So you will say this letter is being, left, ref, uh, being written regarding your patient who was referred to us. Now it becomes easy to read. So sometimes your letter is very good. There is only one word like this referred word over he here that was creating chaos because referred, referred, referred. So you just remove this one word and now you see it becomes fluent. So that is what you need to do in the end when you are done with the letter. You proofread it. Do not rub too much, but at least a word can be erased. That's fine. But erase it nicely. This letter is being written regarding your patient who was referred to us due to now he's better. So he's being referred back to you and you are requested to provide them follow-up care. So again, a nice letter. Now let us see the variation. Suppose you have to write a letter, fourth variation. Last variation, last variation. You are writing a letter to Maria's GP. Who is Maria? Maria is your patient of the day. So you have to write a letter to Maria's GP. Means... The GP is well known to Maria, but in this case, what is different from the above case that patient came to our emergency department due to accident or something. So obviously when patient has come due to accident, he will not first go to his GP. He will directly come to the emergency department. That means GP has been bypassed means he did not go to her GP. She did not go to her GP. She directly came to you. Now patient is better. And now you are sending her to her GP because now GP will provide the follow-up care. So what is the difference between the two scenarios? In the first case, GP was referring the patient. In this case, patient bypassed the GP and he directly came to us. So in this letter, again, you don't have to compare. You just write in simple way. This letter is being written regarding your known patient. Now the patient is known to you. You did not refer, but he's your known patient, Mrs. Maria or Miss Maria. Mrs. Maria. M capital. No hanky pankies and this S should be smaller. So this letter is being written regarding you, Maria, who was admitted to our emergency department due to accident after required treatment again simple you are just telling what happened so when you will think like a nurse in the exam you will not face any problem after treatment she is better so she is being discharged 
simple again patient is better so obviously you will discharge now being her gp you are requested to provide her follow up care or you can simply also write sometimes if you do not get these words if you by chance get confused so i got confused whether i write follow up care this care so you are requested to provide her the the best word which you can fit in any letter you are requested to provide her the required care required care means whatever the care she needs so the only difference between the two scenarios is that emergency department patient will bypass the gp most of the times because accident happened she directly came to emergency department but in foreign countries what happen that when patient becomes better he or she normally takes statement from the gp clinic which is in the nearby area and that is already known to the patient in these two kind of last letters you don't write social history and medical history you directly start with during her hospitalization that is the only different so in these in the last two kind of letters you will get a very big social history and medical history you write only the key points but do remember gp already knows about her social history and medical history because she is already known to gp so means you do not say that mrs x is a smoker so then you have to mention that as she is a smoker so you need to take care of her smoking habits so that is how you mention as and so as you know that she is a smoker so she needs to be motivated to quit smoking so as and so combination will be there if you want to write anything from social history or medical history otherwise you do not write that thing so these are the four common types out of which if you will say what is i am expecting tomorrow it should be like discharge back or a referred back letter the only last thing that i would like to tell you now you will say sir we have done both the letters they both are referred back letter so what is discharge back letter so guide just to tell you discharge back letter again is almost the same but in discharge back letter the difference is that patient comes from a place means like a retirement home retirement home means where patient lives after 65 or 60 years of age so in the retirement home patient fell and have fracture so he came he came to our hospital took treatment after getting better where will he go of course he will go back to his retirement home so in this case the main thing is the place that is why it is known as discharge back letter patient is coming from a place and is being discharged back at the same place so it is about the place it is not about gp it is not about a person it is about a place that is the difference so again if i have to write now you can write yourself but still to make this video complete i am writing it for you this letter is being written regarding your resident mr x rest all copy paste who was admitted to our hospital so he is being discharged so let me copy paste sorry let me copy paste from here to here now the main thing is that emergency department due to accident your resident after required treatment she is better sorry uh, he kar dete hain because we are talking about mr x so he is better so he is being discharged now the special word comes back to the retirement now this is the only difference at retirement home at sorry so he is being discharged back to the retirement home now this is again a simple line i am not saying it is oit line please understand once he reaches there you are advised because they are not doctors so you can advise them rather than request in doctor's case you were requesting so in this case you will say you are advised to follow few instructions for his speedy recovery or whatever the main instruction is you can also write that 
you are advised to follow this thing for his speedy recovery. So now this is a discharge back letter. So always notice to whom you are writing the letter. If you're writing to the manager of the retirement home, so obviously you will say this letter is being written regarding who was admitted to our hospital due to accident after he is better. So he's being discharged back to the home. Once he reaches there, you are advised to follow few instructions for his speedy. That's it. So maximum chances obviously are this kind of letters. Uh, if you are lucky, then you will get an easy letter like a visit letter where you don't have to mention too much about the previous visits and discharge letters are also easy. That is why OET exam can never be difficult. Only our thinking can make it complex. Otherwise, this is a complete controlled exam. When it comes to discharge back letter and uh, referred back letters, you have to control your data count. And that is the only thing that should be taken care of. So I hope you all have understood. This is Dr. Bupesh from Dr. BKM Institutes. And please follow this video even if you take any exam because this is a general video and you need to understand. Now I will take your questions guys. And if you would have any doubts, we'll definitely talk about it. Thank you. See you. Take care. Wish you all the luck for your exam. Thank you.